be taken into your mouth. Liquor has constant. When have you ever seen liquor in a good surrounding? When have you ever seen good things going on where people drank? I'll tell you something, almost every time, even when people don't get drunk, even when, it, when liquor's being used, it's used in a way, and, and, and every, almost every time it's used, trouble pops up somewhere. The ballparks, the baseball parks even know. They, they, the baseball, it's been proven that where there's no liquor, there's less trouble. The baseball parks won't get rid of it because there's money in it. The demon of alcohol. Secondly, consider that Jesus indicated that drinking would be one of the signs of the last days. Let me read verse 36 through 39 in Matthew 24. Listen very carefully. But of that day and that hour, excuse me, of that, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I want you to notice very carefully. Jesus pointed out three major signs that the world was getting worse. He said, when you see these things, you will know that the coming of the Son of Man is getting close. What were those signs? First of all, eating. We don't like that one. He was talking about gluttony, overeating. There's two great sins about gluttony. First of all, it's overeating and harms the body, and secondly, it's waste. Boy, are we given to waste today. One of the things I was taught when I was growing up, I, I, don't, I think it's kind of worked against me. It's a good thing. But I was taught that whatever's put on your plate, you eat it, and you eat all of it. Now that's a good, that's a good teaching. I see so much waste. I see people go into restaurants, and they'll, they'll get big gobs of food and put on their plate, and they walk out and they don't eat a third of it. It's waste. Say, preacher, would you want them to eat all of it and get fat? No, I, I think we, take, we need to take less. Amen. How many of you ever committed gluttony? Don't hold your, don't put your hands up. Overeating. People need to pay attention to health. Young, young children need to be taught not to overeat. The second thing, I'll, I'll come back to that sometime. Marrying and giving in marriage. I, I, I will put this up because I'm talking about drinking. I want to talk about this right now. Marrying and giving in marriage. Marriage and divorce and remarriage. You see, Jesus was very, very concerned about the family. That the family should be wholesome. And we're seeing every, every, every tool that Satan can unleash at the family today is being used. And then he said about drinking, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in, in marriage. Notice the progression, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. The increase of drinking and drunkenness is a sin that will increase in the last days. That's what Jesus said, if I read this correctly. Did he not? Amen? Well, is it increasing? How close are we to the Lord's second coming? It is reported that around the world, beer consumption has risen for the last 19 consecutive years. Drinking overall continues to rise slightly. You know why that is? Drinking already in an epidemic in the United States, over 70% of the people in this country drink. 
to the point that there's enough drink that, that it's an average for every man, woman, boy, and girl. American consume, America consumes over two gallons of beer, every, excuse me, two gallons of alcohol every year. I'd say it's increasing. And Jesus said, when, it, when you see this sign, eating and drinking, living, living, uh, riotous living, drunkenness, when you see this sign and, and drinking increasing, that's a sign we're getting close to the last days and, and to the coming of Christ. I believe we're getting close. <clears throat> the harm and folly of drinking cannot be overestimated. At a college in Minneapolis, not too long ago, at a house party, Girls were, stayed all night. They were on beds and on couches. The next morning, a young lady reached over to her friend. She woke up, she reached over to wake her friend up. Her hand fell upon her hand and her hand was cold. She screamed. She quickly woke up the rest of the girls. But it's too late. Here was a young lady who was dead from drinking. Alcohol poisoning, they call it. Oh, I could go on and on. Will one drink hurt? If she hadn't taken one drink, she wouldn't have taken the rest of the drinks. There's alcohol parties going on all across the country, all across the country in colleges. Young people are drinking, drinking among young people, uh, among, even among the experts who are not saved. Drinking among young people today is at an epidemic proportion. But let's be fair to the demon of alcohol. Let's not anyone get excited about it. It's a social problem. No, it's sin. That's what it is. See, Christians need to take a stand against drinking. Now, there are, I hear this old story all the time. And, and, and remember, Jesus pointed this out. If I'm reading this correctly and I'm understanding this correctly, he used this as one of the signs that, that the world is getting worse as it's going to get just like it was in the days of Noah before the flood, just like back then the world's going to get worse before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And drinking is a big part of that. I hear this old thing, it's only drunkards who are sinning. How many of you think a little dope won't hurt you? How many of us think that a little bite from a king cobra and his poison won't hurt us? Alcohol is a demon. It's a door by which Satan enters into a person's life and destroys his soul or her soul. Alcohol is a demon and the quicker people realize it, the better we're going to be. Prohibition was a good thing. They, they try to rule it as something bad, but listen, it cut down on deaths. The last thing. I told you I'm trying to preach like I'm mad tonight. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at people. I'm mad at the devil. And I'm mad at booze because of what I see it doing every day in society. Consider that Jesus stated drinking is a result of backsliding. Did you know that? Look at Matthew 24, that same chapter, verse 48 through 51. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus again pointed out that drinking is associated with evil people and evil things. He's talking about a Christian who backslides. What a sad thing. 
Jesus said, this is, this is an 